My name is Marcelo Santos, and I'm a professor of geodesy at the University of New Brunswick, Canada. See some of my qualifications at the end of this video. In this video, we will deal with an issue that is gaining attention lately, the apparent reversal of the magnetic pole. We will treat the subject by first making a distinction between magnetic pole and geographic pole. Then, we will talk about the importance of the Earth's magnetic field, to be referred from here forward as geomagnetic field, to finally treat the possible reversal of the magnetic poles and weakening of the geomagnetic field and possible impacts on us. We will try to use simple language. In day to day, when we think of an Earth pole, we think of the true pole, the one used on maps and GPS. The true pole, also called the geographic pole, is an average pole adopted by convention of scientific organizations, such as the International Association of Geodesy, and serves to monitor irregularities in the Earth's rotation. There is another pole that is also widely used, which is called the geomagnetic pole. This is the pole whose direction is provided by compasses. In the figure, the magnetic pole is represented approximately where it was in 1990. The relationship between the direction of the true pole and the magnetic pole at some location is an angle called magnetic declination, whose values are calculated from the world magnetic model. The position of the magnetic poles, north and south, is monitored by observatories distributed around the world. It is known that the magnetic poles move slowly, but in recent years they have started to follow a course that seems to be migratory. The path of the magnetic north pole is seen in this figure. The red color indicates the path of the magnetic north pole from 1590 to 1900. From there, you can see an accelerated migration towards Russia. In the past 20 years, the pole has moved almost the same as it has for the past century, and nobody knows why this is happening. Now let's see how the south magnetic pole behaves. Its movement pattern has been migratory since 1590. The acceleration of this movement is not as notable as that of the North Pole, but it is moving and it has already left the Antarctic continent. The fact is that the magnetic poles change places. The south goes to the north and the north to the south, a phenomenon known as pole reversal. Geophysics indicates that this has already happened 183 times in the last 83 million years. The last reversal occurred 780,000 years ago. Scientific literature indicated that a full reversal would take thousands of years to be completed. But more recent papers suggest that the reversal can occur in less than 100 years, that is, in the course of a human life. Does this acceleration in the position of the geomagnetic poles indicate the imminence of a new pole reversal? Perhaps more important than this drift of the magnetic poles is the role the geomagnetic field plays. The exact origin of the geomagnetic field is still a matter of debate, but the prevailing theory is that the Earth's interior functions like a dynamo. If the Earth were transparent, we would see a solid core immersed in a viscous liquid. The internal solid core burns at 6,000 degrees centigrade, a temperature almost equal to the temperature of the Sun's surface. The internal core consists mainly of solid iron, which is somewhat counterintuitive. Despite its extremely high temperature, it is not liquid due to the strong gravitational pressure of the Earth. The liquid core, known as the outer core, is composed of suffocating viscous molten material. It has a temperature of 2200 degrees centigrade and it, and it is basically cast iron mixed with a little bit of nickel. It is believed that it is the convection of this cast iron within the outer core that generates the Earth's magnetic field. So, the Earth is like two planets in one. Inside it, 
there is a sphere formed by a solid internal part and a liquid external part, both rotating at different speeds. The late Professor Muniz Barreto, from Rio de Janeiro's National Observatory, used to joke, saying that the Earth had a gigantic magnet inside of it. In fact, this simplification helps to understand the geomagnetic field. Due to this huge magnet, a force field is formed embracing the Earth. The direction of the field goes from south to north. The, this large geomagnetic field serves as a shield protecting us against the solar radiation and facilitating the life on Earth. This shield is called the Van Allen Belt after the leader of the research group that discovered it. This figure illustrates the protective role of the geomagnetic field. It protects us not only from solar radiation, but also from cosmic radiation. A large part of the radiation is directed beyond the Earth. Some penetrates the field, and a small part ends up channeled towards the magnetic poles, which causes the famous northern lights. It is interesting to stress that this phenomenon occurs both in the northern hemisphere, the aurora borealis, and in the southern hemisphere, the aurora australis. We have seen earlier that the position of the magnetic pole is changing faster. Now add to that the fact that the, the geomagnetic field is weakening. The SWAR mission, a constellation of satellites that measures the geomagnetic field from space, has revealed that the field is weakening at a rate of 5% per decade instead of 5% per century as before. What can that mean? Well, a weakening of the geomagnetic field itself is not a sign of pole reversal, but pole reversal is preceded by a weakening of the geomagnetic field. It is important to note that the geomagnetic field is not homogeneous across the planet. There are three areas where a stronger protection is offered to the planet, one located in northern Canada, another in Siberia, and the strongest field at the top of the south magnetic pole. However, there is a weakness, the South Atlantic Anomaly, where the highest measurement of cosmic radiation was ever taken. Brazilians will need stronger sunscreen. Something interesting is that if we map the movements of the poles, we will see that they are not moving towards opposite sides of the Earth, but to a common point. Would they meet just below Indonesia? Well, for a pole to exist, there must be another. Would this pole be in the Caribbean? During a pole reversal process, dozens of poles should appear. Until the process is completed, in the meantime, the compasses are going to go crazy. But what would happen if the Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken? In this case, a larger number of charged solar particles would bombard the planet, potentially affecting power grids and satellites, which would also be more exposed in the event of solar flare and coronal mass ejection. An ejection as strong as the one that occurred in 1859, known as the Carrington event, would cause so much damage to the power grid that it would take months to years to repair. Likewise, there would be an increase in human exposure to higher levels of ultraviolet radiation, causing cancer and possibly genetic mutations. However, an advantage of having a magnetic field weaker or a reversal of the magnetic poles is that auroras will become visible in many other places in the world so that the night sky would become something epic. The worst is the possibility of mass extinctions. There are scientific papers that associate a weak geomagnetic field with the extinction of, mega, of the megafauna and the Neanderthals. The good thing is that the subject is still a matter of debate, and there are other papers presenting dissenting voices. The level, uh, to see the level of discussions, a group of researchers suggested that during the last big drop in the geomagnetic field, there was loss of oxygen on the planet, 
followed by mega floods. A weaker geomagnetic field would allow an increased bombardment of the atmosphere by cosmic rays, contributing to the nucleation of low-lying clouds. This can result in more clouds and less heat, as more energy ends up being reflected by the clouds. In this case, we would be, we would be headed for conditions similar to that of a small ice age. It's important to note that the scenario discussed above have a uncertainty component. The fact is that humanity can adapt to changes and, for the first time in its history, understanding what is happening and being able to foresee scenarios. But what can I do to change that? Nothing. You cannot do nothing. Neither with respect to the reverse of the poles, nor with respect to climate change, subject discussed in another video. And do not give money to any group or NGO or government or international organization that asks for a financial contribution to avoid phenomena that we humans cannot influence. The best you can do is keep being a positive force in the world around you, applying in your day-to-day -day life the so-called golden rule, as said by Jesus, so in everything, do to others as you want them to do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Regardless of whether you consider Jesus as God, as, sa as a sage, or as a mythological figure, Keep in mind that the golden rule never fails. The golden rule will not prevent the reversal of the poles, but it will greatly improve your life and the lives of those around you. And we need to stop pollution. And the number one reason is that this is the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil on which we grow our food. We cannot poison them. 